with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you, we say, we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. So here we have some moon anomalies, and these are on lunar orbiter picture 3184-H2. It's a high resolution version of the 3184 picture, or on part thereof. Now, down in this little crater here, we have what looks for all the world like a group of walls. And they have to be real because they're casting shadows. Now the light here is coming from right to left, well, from up here in the top right hand corner really. So you have the crater wall casting a shadow against things. Well, there's obviously something physical there. And it does look a little strange. Now, in this particular f section of the photo, there is not one, but in fact there are four anomalous features, which kind of makes sense, because if you are going to have a base or something like that, or some mining activity, then you would want things concentrated in a similar area, you wouldn't want to spread them out all over the moon. So let's have a look at this one. Here we have a similar sort of structure to the first one. And the thing you'll notice is it's on the same alignment. The alignment matches, the structure runs that way. Hmm. And what is this thing that's poking up that looks for all the world like some sort of dish antenna? Don't know. Could just be a funny shaped rock. But the shadows are rather odd. Because only physical things actually produce shadows, obviously. Now if we look down here, we've got what looks like some sort of pipe or cable coming out of the crater and it's not so obvious in the enhanced picture because I really enhanced that to bring up the actual pipe whatever it is but if you zoom in on the original you can see there seems to be some sort of thing down there And then if we go upwards, there's this area here. This seems to be a Y-shaped object with a T-shaped object next to it underneath. Who knows? Maybe it's a trademark. But they're pretty odd things. And if you were to see these things on Earth, well, you would think immediately that there was some sort of structure there. But that's not all I've found. Here we've got Lunar Orbiter 2113-H3, another high resolution picture. And we've got some oddities here. Once again, they're in craters, but this shouldn't be a big surprise because after all this time, we're still thinking about putting bases in craters ourselves because they protect from glancing blows from meteorites. The only way a meteorite can hit you is if it comes down straight on top of you. Now we've got some fairly obvious, weirdly shaped bright structures in here and remember this is in shadow this is the shadow from the crater wall so what on earth are these and there could be a structure next to it 
and the mind can go mad with this because these pictures aren't terrifically high resolution compared to what modern photographs are capable of. But here's one of the weirdest things out. What on earth is that? And when we blow it up, it certainly seems to be a structure of some sort. You have these peculiar things sticking up, whatever they are, at regular intervals. Kind of looks like a caterpillar, but I don't think it is, unless the moon is really made out of cheese. I suppose it could be a giant cheese mite. And here's a little odd thing, oddity that you'll find. It's quite small. I mean, that bridge is only about a half a mile long or so. 2178-H2, lunar orbiter again. And if I pull it out so that the pixels don't seem so obvious, you can see that what we've got is something in the middle of the crater and a bridge. Another one of these infamous lunar bridges, but this is not one I think anyone has actually found before. So I'd kind of encourage you to do your own searching about on these orbiter images because you'll find some very interesting things. Some great oddities. But don't worry, all is not lost. We don't have to depend on NASA because everyone has found out that NASA lies. All the images that have been airbrushed, that have been proved to be airbrushed, it's quite ridiculous really. Si and the astronauts' communication silenced, and no stars visible in any pictures, other than peculiarly enough, a time lapse picture that was taken from the space station, which shows the Earth. Uh, and that does show stars in the background, but someone has pointed out that possibly they're not the right stars because the pole star is in the wrong place. So, yeah, do we believe NASA? I don't think that we do. But all is not lost because a group of Russian scientists are planning to send their own mission to the moon to do some really high resolution photography. So let's take a quick look at that. Oh, it's beautiful, Mike. It really is. Oh, geez, that's great. Is the lighting halfway decent? Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now. Well, that was then. Back to the here and now. Decades on after that Apollo mission, a group of Russian space enthusiasts and engineers are embarking on a quest of their own. They're planning to send a microsatellite to the moon to get some real high-resolution footage of the remains of that American landing. Yes, that's right, although why it has to be the Russians who have enough power to do this suddenly becomes very obvious because of course this private group of scientists don't have the funding to launch their own moon mission. No, what they're doing is they're piggybacking on the top of an existing Russian space mission and on its way past the moon this Russian mission is going to eject their little satellite which is about the size of two shoe boxes has a very high resolution camera some solar cells a communication device and uh, some thrusters and their plan is to survey the American landing sites 
to put paid once and to, for all to the conspiracy theories that the Americans didn't land, or of course to prove the conspiracists were right, which is possibly what the Russian government are hoping. Now, people have said in the past, well, if we didn't go to the moon, then how come the Russians didn't say anything about it? Because they'd know. And the answer is yes, they would know. However, at the time, the United States was helping the Russians out with millions of tons of wheat. And are they going to rock the boat and see the population starve? No. However, that situation isn't there any longer. So, so long as it's not being done officially by the Russian government, they're perfectly willing to send out some sort of snooper to see exactly what went on with the American moon landings. And you've all seen these videos, the moon hoax and all the rest of it. And um, you can easily find this RT video, it's on YouTube, the full video, um, with the words of the scientist who's leading it and some pictures of them putting together some equipment. Um, yeah, it looks quite good, and doubtless they'll also photograph other things, and hopefully the images will be shared on the web uncensored, rather than NASA's retouched versions. So there is some hope for us all. Now, it's my opinion, having done the calculations on the Van Allen belt, that yes, the asteroids could have survived a trip through it, and I do mean a trip through it. The trip back, maybe not. And um, I'm kind of wondering whether the reason for Neil Armstrong's cryptic speech and his tears were the fact that there is in fact a number of dead astronauts on the moon who could not be brought back. Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Well, you could subscribe to Arduino Tronic, or just go jump in a lake.